body. It's not cutting through it. He has to hijack everything. I mean? wanted to do that what in a certain way. No, I'm not doing anything now. No. Anyone that's just come over from Instagram knows what we're talking about. Show them what I'm do we're doing. I had all sorts of different things I was going to do with that. But it doesn't no. look right, does it? You go and get the turkey carving knife and cut it open. So it's up to you. You'll have to see later what we were planning for that. Put it down. What is it? I'm not talking to you about it. What's wrong with you? How are you, everybody? Welcome. If it's your first time to Coffee Morning, we are here Monday through to Saturdays. And on Saturday... Mark, you're going to take someone's eye out. <laughs> Do you remember that as a kid? You're going to take that? someone's... What's another good kiddie one like that? You're going to take someone's eye... Oh, the wind changes. Your face will stick your like face, that. Your face will stay Did like I ever tell you this? That I can't remember whether it was Kiki or Maddie. We were say, we'd said this to them, and fast forward to five minutes later, they were doing this weird thing where they were running and doing these different faces. I was like, what the hell are you doing? I think it was Maddie. She said, I'm seeing if my face changes when the wind changes. My you get stuck when the wind changes. She was trying to make wind by going back and yeah. forth. My, my granddad in Cardington Avenue in Birmingham, he said to me, Touch that monkey puzzle tree. And I reached over and I touched it. He said, no, no, no. And then just before I did, he said, don't, you'll turn into a monkey. And I man, I thought, no, I'm going to touch it. And I touched it. And he was so annoying. Maybe that's where I get it from. All day, he insisted he couldn't understand me because I was talking monkey language. Oh, God, so like you. He so insisted like I was a monkey you. for the day. To the that's point, exactly I started how to cry in the kitchen with Nan saying, I'm not a monkey. Oh, don't. Yeah, I was like, I haven't got a tail. Oh, so Maybe. what's another kiddie one like that? Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry. Make yeah, that's cry. a good one, Kerry. Kerry. That's the Never worst. understood that. You wouldn't say that now, like, oh, here come the waterworks. That was just dirty. Oh, yeah, Ashley, pick your nose and your brains will fall out. Oh, I didn't know that one, Ashley. Maybe it's unique to some. <laughs> Maybe set. that's unique to you. It's <laughs> a good one, though. Maybe that's just your family, Ashley. <laughs> Oh, Minky Moo said it. You pick out your brains. Minky Moo said it as well. We didn't know that You one. pick your brain out your nose. Oh, don't get too close to the TV. You'll get square, square eyes. eyes. That's a brilliant one, Sarah. I genuinely believe that too. Oh, did your mum actually say that, Clodagh? Mum actually had a... Clodagh actually had a mum that said, wait till, wait till your father gets home. Fa I was desperate for that Do you remember that show? Line. Wait desperate till your father gets... Wait till your father gets... Wait till your father gets home. I'd have paid home. good money for a father to come home. What was I that show? Wait till school. your father gets home. Wait till your father gets... Until your father gets, wait till your father gets home. I don't know. What was it? I don't know, darling. What was it? Was be it good. the witch program? Abby Reed says, be good, Santa is watching. Yeah, that's yeah. another one. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, there yeah. weren't as many as you like to think, were there? Not very child-specific. Um... My eyes feel like they're dropping onto my eyes. It's so my nan used to call me a burke all the time. And then when, when I was obviously an adult, I said to her, nan, you do know what burke is, is rhyming slang for? Oh. Berkshire Hunt. Oh, yeah. So when you call someone a Burke... That's a good one, Minky. Eat your carrots, otherwise you won't be able to see in the dark. Or was it an actual own show, was it, Mewtube? That's what it was called, Jen Lake says. Mm. Yeah. Wait till your father gets home. Do you want a knuckle sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a parent would say that to a kid, would they? <coughs> there was such a cute reel the other day. I showed it to you, wasn't it? It's that tiny little girl. She was so cute, wasn't she? Knuckle sandwich. I'm going to give you a knuckle sandwich to a dad. Morning, Lee. So yeah, I do. Yeah. Eat your crusts, then your hair will be curly. Yes. Leslie C. Um, Pat used to say that to the girls. Yeah. What was the one that Nan said? Be careful or you'll end up in Dickie's Meadow. Oh, yeah. I never understood that. Dickie's Meadow is a death. Yeah. Be so careful out there or you'll end up in Dickie's Meadow. Don't chewing Medo. gum, Kerry says, or it will wrap around your heart. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yes. Yeah, so Eloise funny. ST would like a birthday song, Nadia. She turned 22. Happy birthday to you, Eloise. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you, Eloise. Eloise. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday dear Eloise. Eloise. Happy birthday to you. Stop playing with knives. Put it down. It's gone through. You absolute idiot. Is there any children watching? Never do anything that Mark does. Like Get Mark. your guts for garters. Oh, I love that one. Get your guts for garters. You've totally ruined this whole thing. You realise we're not doing it now. My name is to say I walked like Larry Grayson. I never really understood that one. Yeah. So why do you walk like Larry Grayson? Oh my Grayson? God, Jenny's mum used to say, playing with your belly button will make your bum fall off. Wow. 
I, I did, did you used to do this as a kid? If you've got a sticky inny, do you used to stick your finger so no, far no. into your belly button that you would get this sharp, almost tickly pain? The other side of you. The yeah. other side of you inside, yeah, which to me was like the on-off button. I've done that. Have you done that? A friend of mine's dad, Lucy Williams, Morning, says, Michelle. used Lovely to say... you've caught alive too. Oh, yeah. Hi, Michelle. Uh, a friend of mine's dad oh, used sorry, to say... Oh, sorry. That's a great one, Mandy. Don't eat the apple pips or an apple tree will go oh, yeah, so, yeah. I used to be so paranoid yeah. about that because I just couldn't help myself. If I was told not to eat the apple pips, I would eat the I apple I thought they'd grow out of your ass. Uh, Lucy Williams says, a friend of mine's dad used to say, I'll knock you into the middle of next week. Oh, that's horrible. That's a bit much. Wow. Stuart G, my, I used to be a butcher and I have two stab wounds in my leg where the knife went, Mark, went through. Stuart G's tying me up as well. God. Thank you, Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. Right, so we've got some news stories today. Stick with us because we're going to do... With, I've got a lovely little story about when you have the talk with the kids. Oh, yeah, the birds and the it's bees. It's a great story, isn't it? Birds and the bees, it is. Um, um, but I wanted, I wanted okay. to talk about... I wanted to talk... I want to ask you, it's quite a serious subject, but it's absolutely everywhere in the press. It's partly because this lunatic petrol bond a migrant centre in Dover then drove to a petrol station and killed himself. Well, I mean, the thing is, he truly is. I mean, he has a huge well, mental health he's condition. He, to do, he did, yeah. So what led him to do such a thing, one can only imagine, but how horrendous, how petrifying for the people in that camp, mm -hmm. how petrifying for the people in the petrol station. I mean, God, the whole thing could have gone up. Yeah, yeah. And then for all he, the person who's done this, family, friends, everybody, this is the most tragic of stories. Oh, hang on, Absolutely I forgot tragic. to put the mic in. We do that every day. No, I don't. I've done it twice. So have nobody heard us? No. Um, what I was going to say was, you know, a thousand migrants arrived on Monday. I just wanted to ask you, you guys, what do you feel the solution? What is the solution to the migrant crisis? Because I, I heard, what, I I heard Kinnock's son talking about it, and I, I yeah. wasn't convinced. I what, wasn't, did he, what was he? He said, "Well, more. We'll have more civil servants. We'll liaise with France. We'll take people out of. You know, he was talking about improving the living conditions, but of course, there's a cost to that." But there's the a, cost is, we have the least cost-effective system. It's so six, a really it costs good six million a day. guy on the radio um, saying yesterday that thousand. we, our system is an absolute waste of money because this, because we keep getting in a worse situation. Mm. We have got now disease raging through. Do you really think you can lock human beings up like that and treat them without devastating, like that, without devastating effect? Mm. And I think... There is no safe and secure way to come through. Mm. So a lot of the people that are actually waiting are genuine, mm. um, uh, what, what's the word? Asylum, Asylum seekers. seekers. So you need to have a safe passage through mm. that you, um, and, and you deal with those applications. We take a tiny amount. We have 1%. Of the refugees of this of the, yeah, Germany, of the world the European Union here, takes a lot only one percent. It's tiny compared to the rest of the world. The the Daily Mail will have you think that we are completely overrun, and and everybody wants to come to this country. Guess what? They don't actually. And there was somebody in the radio yesterday saying there are an awful lot of people. He goes, if you think of people as resources, right? We have, we have a huge problem now filling vacancies and jobs. Mm. There are an awful lot of people. You know, there are of all kinds of abilities. Doctors, scientists, um, manual workers, all sorts of people. If you can't think of them as human beings, if your heart can't go there, think of them as a commodity that can help this country. This is what this guy was saying. He was really interesting. I think... And he said, you know, you can't just say that you're not going to engage with France. We have to engage with France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. Faith Goodman makes an important point. Not sure putting them in hotels with more food and warmth than the rest of the UK's poor and pensioners is necessarily the correct way to do it. I mean, here's the problem. Here's a real problem. Because what happens, you know, we're going into a downturn in the economy and everything like that, cost of living crisis. You know, what happens in, a, in an economic crisis like that, like 
it happened, I hate to use a dramatic example, but like it happened in post-World War I Germany, is that people look for scapegoats, people want to point to other kind of contributory factors. I've always said, you have to have, you have to have a limit on migration. You can't just have open borders. You can't have, you know, you do have an infrastructure within the country in question that you have to protect. But I do think that, I think, Mitri, you just said, I do think that, you know, coming out of the EU, coming out, you know, Brexit and everything, means that we're just not talking to the rest of Europe in a meaningful no, way. So dangerous. I think there has to be collaboration. I think no. there has to be an acknowledgement at COP27 that actually an awful lot of this is going to be... Well, this it's going to increase the problem, not just due to wars, but due to climate change, Starvation. due to, yeah, places Lack just not being water. able to grow food... Uh, grow crops and add water and all that kind of stuff. So we're all collectively responsible for that. But then the other part of it that really troubles me is how we have a completely contrasting set of priorities depending on who the migrant is. And I am referring to Ukraine. I think the Ukrainian refugee attempt, which is laudable, um, actually shows a huge disrespect to nearly all other asylum seekers and migrants from anywhere else in the world. I mean, it really does, because to the people in a lot of these other countries, Somalia and other places in Africa and Syria and all these places, their crises are just as critical as the Ukrainian one is to the Ukrainians. I don't think people really understand. A lot of people don't understand how Syria was treated. Um, Putin has been practising his war techniques in Syria for years. They've been bombed with chemicals. They've, they've had a horrific time. People, the Syrian people, want to stay in Syria. Syria is a beautiful country. Most people want to stay in country. their country. Most people I mean, want most to stay there. Do. And yet we, have, we just don't have the same sympathy for a Syrian as we would a Ukrainian. I, so, I suppose I here's, think, another question. here's another question. All right. Let's put ourselves in this potential position. Russia attacks us. Russia nukes the fuck out of us. We, obviously, there'll be survivors, but we'll be in a parlous state. And then they say they're going to make a land grab and invade us. Let's just say that. Because that's the situation for a lot of other countries. They're being invaded. They're being occupied. Then we want, what would you do for your children if you knew jumping <coughs> on a boat and rushing to Ireland or then further rushing to America was your only way to save, save your, your kids? Family. And then what would you do if suddenly all these horrible gangs got control of that coastline because there was, you know, it, there was lawlessness in the country in question and they started charging? Would you really not possibly consider it? You know, so I suppose all I'm trying to say is it's really there, but for the grace of God, to, to go put any another, of us. Yeah, yeah, put that our whole of our lives are set dressing. It can all be taken away in a second. Mm. And we could be... And we've seen that with the Ukrainians. Mm. And because... They're closer to us and because it's Europe and I'm afraid also because they're white, I think there's just more mm. uh, sympathy. But, but even if people don't have sympathy for this refugee situation, does nobody have fear of what happens when humans are treated like animals? How they could turn? You know, somebody, Stuart, just said there, we've got refugees in the hotels here and they're running riot. Imagine years of not being able to work. Mm. Kept in... Now, these aren't hotels where they're in the spa all day. You know, and, and if you are and locked like in and you're not able to work and you're not... And you're, there's no end to your misery, any human being would, would start to behave in a more chaotic way, let's say. So Make I just... The thing is, it's not working. What we're doing isn't working yeah, and it's costing a, us how much did you say? Six million, six million a day. A day. Imagine a if we had a system rethink. that could work. It needs to be completely rethought. And as Labour says, Suella Braverman has to come into the Commons and stop sending junior ministers in to answer questions. It's weird, isn't it? We keep getting home secretaries who never want to face the music. If you cram a load of people into one, essentially a hangar, and you don't give them medical care and you don't give them decent food and you don't give them sunshine and air. Disease breeds. Mm. That's not because those people are dirty or those people are bringing disease. We are, we are not being looked after by this government. Mm. And this is just one other area of it. Minky Moo makes an important point. And that's because people, people always want one baddie to focus on. It's, yeah, it's, almost like, it's almost like we can't cope with lots and lots of baddies, can we? I just think we um, are better than this. I just think we're better than this. Mm. I, think, I just think it's embarrassing. I've got a horrible feeling, though, that this... I mean, this is pegged to this um, petrol bomb attack. I mean, I do worry that... I mean, obviously, you know, attacks on migrants and what have you do, have gone up. 
but uh, I just worry it's going to get worse. Um, uh, why is it always young men between 16 and 30 and hardly any women? Because they, I suppose they're the most Often capable they leave to, to, to go and yeah, get money. Absolutely, mm. that's what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. You, when we see the babies washed up on the beach that have died, that shows us why yeah. people say, you stay here yeah. and we'll go first. And they really do believe, because they are running often, not all, there are some mm. that come here for other reasons, but often we have created the West and have created horrific situations in other countries. That's not to say, look, none, then, of, none of this is to say that there aren't scams and there won't be, course, there won't be those. Of course, absolutely. And I think the government... But the system are, isn't saving the us government, from them. The government are actually uh, paying Albania to improve situ the situation over there so that there aren't so many not as justified uh, um, migrants coming from Albania. Yeah. They've identified a problem specifically with Albania. and um, But they, you know, I think it's going to take a sort of country we by country dialogue. We need a dialogue. system. Yeah that can screen those that are Yeah, but we can't get, we can't get people us. through passport control. Well, we can't get people through passport control. Yeah, Brits, <laughs> we can't get Brits through, but uh, the, the electronic passport control machines never works. It's just a system. But to just tar everyone with the same brush, that is, and many are running for their lives, is un-British. And I think it's shameful. MeTube, Lord Gale, a Tory peer, said on radio this morning it was a deliberate policy by the Home Office to not book more hotels. They want the condition at the processing centre to worsen so that it's less attractive. But who does that make us? Yeah. That's disgusting. When you look back mm. in history, when people round people up mm. and put them in camps, mm. what's that reminiscent of? Well, exactly. Let's think of the Jews being shipped. Just uh, disgusting. You know, escaping from uh, Germany. Um, okay, next story. As if, as if my, the migrant problem doesn't cause everyone to get a little bit hot under the collar, so does the word woke. And the government are cracking... Now, this is, a, this is more complicated than you think. This, you know, there's a lot of stories where the term woke is invoked to get us all outraged, especially by the right-wing press, outraged about, about some silly things, things, not all things. So we don't focus on the yeah, good they the call them things. Silly, no, but they call them all silly things, whereas actually a lot of them aren't necessarily yes. silly things. But they're yeah. quite compassionate things, but they don't suit the kind of the mainstream narrative. Um, the government want the police to get back to basics as the Prime Minister wants to tackle crime to be a priority. Oh, so they're they blaming want the to police stamp again. out what they call woke Not the massive policing. Cuts. Woke what about policing. the massive cuts that yeah. Theresa May made? What about that? Mm. You talk to, you listen to any police... This they've been they've had their hands tied behind their back. Well, okay. Well, there's a big okay. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little Go bit, and not just devil's advocate. Should the police be focusing on non-crucial crime? You know where. You but know, are they focusing on non-crucial crime, well, or is this the bloody right-wing press? Yeah. Well, they're they're I mean, talking they about really? the woke police. We want to get officers onto the front line doing what they're supposed to do, which is preventing and solving crime. Um, well, police do say we are so caught up now with paperwork and procedure that we're not. Yeah, able they don't to want do to be job. dealing with. For, they use as an example policing bad jokes on Twitter. I think we live in a culture and society where people are very offended easily, and I think there's a complete. Re I, I think a but good again, example would be reaching to the police all the time when someone has lightly broken either I don't know a COVID rule or a, a hose pipe ban or so you know all this kind of stuff that the police get called into and then they have to check. But but. but Police commissioners will admit, they will say, it's run away with us, the internet. Mm. And there's been no financing or no rethinking mm. or no big what do you think blue of? sky thinking on how we deal with the internet mm. thing. You, you know, I really, really take umbrage, and there's a lot wrong with the police, don't get me wrong, I'm no police, you know, blind police lover. But it really annoys me that every time the Tories want to distract from what they've done mm. to the NHS or to the police with their massive cuts and bad management, they turn around and point the finger about something like... Why do they keep on saying this? the tofu-eating Guardian reading Woi Karate. But, but that's fascist sort of thinking, that. Let's get yeah. everybody angry with everybody. Look at this, LEMJ. My son didn't get through his police training because he wanted to reason with people instead of arrest them. Aww. They don't have enough... I, Charlene Evans, I agree. And in a sense... They don't have enough resources. They're, they're tugged all in all directions because on exactly. the one hand, they're being told... This is a crime. Deal with people not ta people taking the knee, for example, in support of Black Lives Matter. On the one hand, you know, a, cl a classic example was the over. So, for example, overbearing policing of the Sarah Everard. 
protests or, you know, peaceful demonstration. Terrible you know, management. Terrible management. So, you know, lots of decisions are being made in, in the wrong areas. And I suppose, in a sense, there's a probably a laced or veiled attack here on climate change protesters and all that kind of stuff, isn't it? We, you know, Wokarati police, they don't want the police dealing with people who are being offended. Every time we're angry about these small things, they're carrying on doing the fuck-ups that they're doing on the big things. Good Chip Lollipop says, we need a taller and fitter police force. They do not make we me feel... Don't. I'll tell you something I That's noticed. That's what Zina was saying yeah, yesterday. She was in... Where was she? Where she just been? Nice. Yeah. And she said, my God, you know, the police are everywhere. She goes, they're terrifying. You know, they've got these guns. They're just... And Sweden she was in recently, wasn't she? And they said, she says, when you think, when you see policemen here, you're so right. You don't go, oh, No. Do well, they look, like, they look like a cousin who's 16. But... The other thing I noticed, we were talking about it yesterday, when you look at our policemen's uniforms, they look like they've been made by the teachers that make really flimsy clothes for a nativity. Noddy was a big, big problem. They look like nativity our, clothes. Noddy was a big problem for our police force. Noddy. Noddy. Well, the police, well, no, because it does. It looks I like think Noddy town. Does anyone else think they're sort of boob hats I think they've a got to go. I think just have them for ceremonies. I do think there's something about looking the part. I do but think it's just two dicks in a dot green. And we've what are you going to say on. then? Two dicks in a... I mean, when you go to the airport and you see them all there with their kind of guns and they've got... I like to see a policeman with so much on his belt, you don't know what the hell's going on. You think, yeah, I like okay, to see things swinging. Do you? Yeah. Like what? Truncheons <laughs> and, 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 and guns. <laughs> oh, right, OK. Uh, who thinks the police should be armed? There's a big question. God, we're going for all of the top ones. I mean, in a, minute, in a minute, we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we got given info at the Black Lives Matter protest, says Holly McCready, telling you what your rights are and why they can't arrest you for peaceful protesting. There needs to be a whole new process in place. Yeah. God, don't we just think this when we look out to everything, our education system, our national health service, our police, you just look at it all and you go... Oh, no, oh look, that's interesting. Look at this, Aaron <laughs> Bullimore. We have specialist officers in Pompe Pompey to deal with hate crimes. They're called LAGLOs, lesbian and gay liaison officers. They cover any oh. LBGT hate crimes. Where's we should Pompey? have. Uh, do you mean Portsmouth? Um, I thought you meant Pompeii in uh, in Italy. We should have more different specialisation. Mm. Well, so you have a sort. I suppose you have the drug squad, don't you? And then you have the. Uh, I mean, the thing is, I'd like more specialisation in mental health emergency because. Actually, yeah, and mental, I have listened to a lot of programmes recently on the radio about the police because I was getting that kind of, you know, just that it's attitude hard. of like, it's, oh, it's the hard. police yeah, are yeah. terrible. Of course Hi, they're Victoria, not. Jane. And they said, you know, oh, I can't remember, a huge percentage of their call-outs now are around mental health. Mm. So why... Katie when, Garland, so my husband we, is a policeman and works bloody hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they run towards trouble when we run away. You know, it's mm. incredibly scary to be a policeman. But I think, you know, when, when they're saying, when she's saying, or who, Suella Broverman is saying things like, we need less time spending on woke issues. No, you know what they need to spend less time on? Dealing with mental health situations that they are not qualified to do mm. and takes them away from all their police work. And how's that happened again? Because of all the mass massive cuts mm. in their mental health. So a huge amount of their call-outs are for people that are in mm. dire straits or people that are... You know, acting out violently, aggressively, or whatever. But if you think about it, if you think about it, most violent crime, most people who conduct violent crime, um, not all. I'm not saying all, but but most in some way are going to have a. You know, it's a definition of some degree of mental health. No, crisis. no, no. But there's a real difference to somebody, you know, just going out and holding. Yeah, but it's a very gun hard. But it's very hard. For example, we had a crash literally that nearly went into our front garden, and and the police just have to respond to the emergency, emergency. don't they? So yeah. you, you have to send whoever. But they don't have people that they can call up and say, "God, look, we don't know if this is a nasty fuck or if this is mm. actually somebody that's in a mental mental health Maybe crisis." Because that there is one no, should there campaign no for court. mental health police, mental, mental health, health police, because who... the police and, it, and who was it there who's husband is a, a police, police officer, officer. Mm. um messages here now if that if if I, is that what you hear all the time from your husband oh look also? laurel nickel says police can section people though under the law i didn't know that i didn't know they i could. didn't know no. that yeah yeah outlandish creations nativity clothes they, they do the stitching just doesn't look good fit for purpose if i'm honest if i'm honest last time i stood next to a police officer mm. um okay let's move on conspiracy theories who 
likes a cons- what what in your mind defines what in your mind defines a conspiracy theory because we were talking about this earlier the most obvious example of it recently obviously surrounds uh, covid uh, vaccines and the idea that a false narrative has been promoted often by people in authority uh, in order to somehow dupe us or lead us into some awful dark place and all this kind of stuff now i'm not just going to say oh conspiracy th-. there's a fine line between conspiracy theories and actually challenging the status quo and the and, and author, authoritative or mainstream status quo thinking. Uh, let me give you an example. To be querulous or questioning of a vaccine doesn't make you a rabid anti-vaxxer. It yeah. makes you a thinking, inquiring, thoughtful individual. I've got a really good example of that. As you know, we, we are crazy about John Campbell through the pandemic. If, you, if this is your first time visiting us here, John Campbell is, um, is a scientist, he's a teacher actually, and all through the pandemic he was, you know, researching everything that came up and, and was a real advocate of the MNRA vaccines. And um, it's just been so interesting recently watching his videos where by using science-backed evidence, he is wanting to relay to people the shift in what we're seeing and in numbers and all of this. Now, he can't even say the word vaccine. He has to say recent pharmacological, pharmaceutical intervention or something because there is no room to have any discussion whatsoever. Listen, when we were in the pandemic, it was a case of absolutely, we just all have to rush into it. There were, no, there were no options. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look back and see where mistakes might have been made and question some of what was going on with Big Pharma and all that. But any discussion now, and you are just called a conspiracy theorist, and that really frightens me. Along the same lines of the woke thing and everything, it mm. just I feel like we're moving into an even more dangerous even more dangerous territories than we've been in before where discussion and opposition to any kind of thought and you can whip out the woke line, you can whip out the conspiracy no, theorist line and then, it's interesting. And then I, I who do, do we become? I do think it's really interesting that around, I, I like this comment here, Thomas Bentley, haha, the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is six months. I find that joke funny. Y- you mean that you within mean? six months it will be shown to either be true or not true? Is that right. what you mean? Um, for me, I find it really worrisome that you're simply not allowed to even question. Let's think about the business model of a pharmaceutical company. Mm. A pharmaceutical company to exist needs people to be ill. And Otherwise, they make it can't sell anything. Billions. And so, you know, so, but that's not to say that they're not also spearheading research and cures and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I think to, to, to feel you can't talk about talk it. Talk about it and go, is, okay, is quite something. let's see what the but, impact. We have this incredible data now where we've had millions of people who have had this um, disease and who've been vaccinated. Let's look at the data, evidence backed. Let's look at the data. You can't do that. Well, that, and that they don't want you to. They don't want you to do that. Mm. And that I find very, I find but that's that a terrifying. conspiracy theory to say that they but don't want you to. But I would now be called. We had yeah. our vaccines, so, yeah. but I, I'm interested. I'm yeah. interested to see what impact it's having on yeah. all of our health okay. long term. Why shouldn't I be allowed to do that? They're being called to loom. Okay. The, again, the peg for this story is they won't publish what Elon Musk, uh, new head of Sorry, new chief twit at Twitter reposted a post that suggested that the uh, attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband was he, well, basically a conspiracy theory was, was published on social media about the attack. I can't find out what that, if any of you know, I can't find out what the original post was, but Elon Musk reposted it and has since taken his repost down. Um, what about conspiracy theories like you know, they're all injecting us with 5G, 5G is d- d- corroding our brain, and there are lizard people running running the White House. Because, you know, is are, I suppose what I'm asking is, is there quite a clear line between natural inquiry and challenging thought and total lunacy? Or, or is it a slippery slope? I mean, once you get hooked in with one thought, can you be dragged sort of almost more extremely to another? Because, I mean, do you believe there are lizard people? 
No, I don't. No, okay. I, of course I don't. <laughs> but um, but I think oh, it's just so complicated, isn't it? I mean, that brilliant, brilliant film, which will really urge everyone to look at, The Social Dilemma, is was was really scary and really opened my eyes and made everything even more confusing on how we mm. have controls in place. Because as you know, you can look up one thing and then you can fall down a dark hole of a million other things being... Yeah, because the algorithm just kind of buttresses yeah. what you've gone for. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, Free voice is not indoctrination, Mickey Moon. Uh, can I just say, L L M J? I think you said you're a homeopath. It's ridiculous to call it conspiracy, it's just another viewpoint. I mean, for example, if you're a homeopath, you will be characterised by the mainstream as a crackpot. Well, and I love homeopathy. Yeah, 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 no. I've homeopathy for what, decades, all my family. What I've has. never understood with anyone is that the term complementary medicine actually suggests that it's complementary to kind of conventional and medicine. And it's so. a medicine that's been used, it's an ancient medicine. Mm. It's like acupuncture and, and all these <coughs> ancient medicines. <coughs> it's amazing, isn't it? They say, but what is it? Well, do you know what's in your antibiotic? Do you know what's mm. in your vaccine? Do you know what's in... That's a good one. Charlene <coughs> Evans, did we walk on the moon? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I was trying to I do a sort of... I, sort of I don't know about that one, Yeah, actually. I don't know about that one. When but I've you looked... know what? There are some conspiracy theories that actually are fun to go with. And yeah. they're not actually damaging. <coughs> and I think, you know, like UFOs and all... It's fun to kind of imagine and kind of wonder... The one that's that upsetting kind of me the most is that there can be no questioning around the vaccine. Yeah. Because I feel we've been yeah. very manipulated by people that are making billions. Yeah. OK, uh, final story, because you want to talk about when to talk to kids about the birds and the bees? Oh, all right, so this is a story um, that I saw in the paper today. So um, this woman was in her house and she hears her five-year-old playing with two eight-year-olds and it's all going along jo jolly nicely and then he starts to make these sounds and she's like straight away her back you know, snaps up and then as these sounds goes up goes <laughs> carries on she realizes that he's doing a full-on female orgasm wow okay this was a little boy in the garden yeah he's five years old so right. she goes out and she's like oh <laughs> That's an interesting How sound. How did you know it was an orgasm? You know what? Oh, she, ha, ha. No, she, she said it was obvious. Oh, right, okay. So, so then the eight and nine-year-old, like, sort of, like, you know, a bit, like, freaked out because they were laughing as he was doing it. And she's like, so what? what's that sound? And they said, um, oh, it's a sex sound. So then she was like, oh, so what sex? Oh, it's when you have a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Right. So she, so she, so it was just about how she felt then. She had to go into the talk with her five-year-old because, and she was really confused because he doesn't have access to an iPad. <clears throat> They've got child controls on their stuff in the house. So this must have been something that these other boys had mm. showed him or told him about. Whatever. Elaine Denning, how did they know it was a female one? Then? Do men sound different? Maybe she didn't say female. <laughs> maybe I said female. Yeah, maybe. So it was the question, when is the right time to talk to your kids? I think it depends on every child, no? I mean, as soon as they... I mean, in that instance, what well, would you do? Well, I just thought, did we difficult. ever... I thought it would be nice because they've always got nice stories. What age were you... Did your parents ever have the talk with you? Your mum did. We know your story well. <laughs> I've never had a more uh, detailed description of the female orgasm in my life. It became something I was literally petrified of. I thought I'd have to be an Olympiad to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> she Maybe she's putting you off. Elsa Pop. Like... Classic mm. 80s childhood. My nan told me about the birds and the bees by drawing a picture with my fuzzy felt. <laughs> I, I desperately want to see I how she did that, that with the fuzzy story. felt. Which bits did she and use? And did she use birds and bees or did she use two humans? Yeah. <laughs> and why, why in the kind of joy of sex book does he always have to have a beard? Why is he such a hippie? Why is he sort of, sort of, such a sort of ugh, hippie? No, mine never. No, mine did never. your parents... Have, when can did you do your a poll? Parent, yeah, I'll do a poll. Most people think we landed on the moon. So there we go. A third of you don't know. Um, what do I, how do I ask? Did your parents give you the, the talk? Did your parents... I bet the majority of people give say no. I think most parents you... shy away from it. Oh, the talk. oh, Zoe's granny gave her the talk. And she was really how open did she and do honest that? about did she? it. Did you? Did you? Um, John Brannan, my sex education was given me by my by a monk at my senior school. Oh no! Oh God! Nice. That's like getting the plumber to yeah. do to do your brain surgery, isn't it? I, I mean, saw I saw it sex? in a way that I, I could never forget. So I mean, you know, sometimes one one is is dragged there, kicking and screaming. I'll never forget a particular experience with some babysitters, um, and you know, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, my mum described in great detail that one thing, but it was only one side of it. So I didn't really know what I had to do. I didn't really know what the deal was with, with, with me, apart from these babysitters. Um, not talks at school or at home. First Willie I saw was a flasher on my paper round. God, yeah, do you remember flashers? I mean, they, there, was, there were so many, weren't there, on buses? Yeah. And, um, Louis N, I said they might not choose to have a baby the other day and he wanted to understand how we choose. So I started to explain it's like animals mating. My <laughs> husband's look. <coughs> no. Yeah, you see, why do you go to animals? Yeah, yeah, why is it always... But hang on a minute. What is the bird... Why is it birds and bees? Nature, because they're trying to say it's natural. Yeah, no, but it's bees nature. don't have sex, do they? Probably. Don't they just lay it? Don't they? No, oh, they must have sex. Oh my god, who's that? Pigeons have loud sex. Roxy Bear, I never, and I've got eight kids now. <laughs> do you think you wanted to? You should be. My mum said we need to talk about the birds and the bees, says Anita Evans, then switched the hoover on and I heard nothing. <laughs> That's very I pay funny. I pay money to hear what she was actually oh saying behind God. the sound. Oh, you guys are so funny, uh, Gloria Chesson. We had a whole class in it, even with bananas and condoms. Yeah, we did have. Why do they use a penis? Yeah, yeah. Why do they use a banana? Yeah. It's confusing for children. Ashley Garden. I wonder what you're talking about for a minute. There. Yeah. Don't they have <laughs> sex and then die? Uh, yeah, I think they do. I think. What they... bees? Yeah. I got given an Osborne book, Carly. You know. <laughs> Uh, Sil Carney, I was given an adult book very young and my favourite part was how babies were made, which I showed in primary school every year from year one to about five. I was given a book, that's, I do remember now, I've got a book, and there was a shot of the woman's legs. Do you remember this shot? Woman's legs like that, you know, with them sort of straddled like that on her back and the baby's head coming out. When I turned the page, I screamed because I thought it was a spider. Oh, I God. thought it was a creature with a head yeah, you see, you running towards me. And I was wake petrified. Wake process stuff. Yeah. Awful. Um, well, there you go, guys. Uh, final little story. Joe Biden, uh, in a speech, said there are 54 states in America, not 50. Um, now, he, he is way out of hand. What about him calling... And, you know, and the UK has a great new uh, yeah. Rashi Sinat. Rashi Sinat. As my brother said, go figure. Now, look, like, what are you talking about? Uh, now, I know a lot of people in America go, Why, what's your problem with... We don't have a problem with Biden. God, 84% we were so, did not have the talk. Get, didn't get the talk. Wow. Wow, guys. Wow. Well, check out part two of our sex, how to stay married chat. Um, That's tomorrow, part two. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, no, I think the only thing I'd like to say about the Biden thing is he's clearly an old man. He's clearly struggling. He is not he, he, In terms of his political leanings, absolutely 100% agree with him. Poor Joe, I think, is the question. He, I think he's disorientated. He's not well. He's not well. Uh, when he was asked if he was running again, apparently he just sat and had an absence. He wasn't there. He, he just he lost... But, I mean, this is... What but is if it this with was Trump, president? If this was Trump the world would be clamouring for him they to would. be out. They would, and for I him to be tested we have to by a doctor. Well, he was asked to be he tested. He should be tested by a doctor. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, imagine he, if he accidentally just leans I mean, over, the, thinks the alarm clock is the button. It's like I always say, the whole world should get to, to vote on the American president because yeah. the whole world is affected by everything America does. And I want him tested because I don't think he's cognitively able to do it. Just every single time we see him. Yeah, Reese Roberts he says, says SNL. something unbelievable. SNL said, uh, oh, she's yeah, SNL did a sketch over the weekend highlighting the massive concern and fear of Biden running in 2024 um, due to the deterioration. deterioration. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. And where are the people that like around him? Mm -hmm. You know, his wife must know his. Yeah. That's possibly yeah. why we don't hear too much. I'm amazed they don't use Kamala. Harris more. I, don't, I just don't understand. You Mind know? you, I feel a bit embarrassed now to say anything about other uh, anybody else's governments with the state. Of our yeah, own. no, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. he must not seen yeah. Castle Post. Check out our fucking mess. Yeah. All right, guys. Look, have a lovely day. And um, uh, movie reviews later tonight. The weekly rushes will be coming too.